Before I moved to Montreal, I used to live in this small town. When a new business would come to town, everyone would just lose their minds, especially when it was a franchise. It was like there was all this built up advertising that people had been hit with for a decade, showing like Chili's or Harvey's or whatever. And when that franchise finally arrived in town, the floodgates would open on everyone's pent up, I've got to buy this. So a few weeks ago, I went to the Franchise Expo in Ottawa to see what businesses might be coming to Montreal soon and what businesses are currently here. I got a big bag of swag sponsored by Fresh Slice, which is a pizza thing that cares about children. Businesses, aren't they great? <laughs> I thought I'd go through everything that was at the Franchise Expo and ask the people who run the franchises if they're planning on opening in Montreal anytime soon. The first thing I found was called uh, InExpress. They say that they have an office in Montreal, but if you look for the office, it's actually in Toronto. InExpress was kind of the first place where you're talking to them and they're just trying to sell you so hard on joining the franchise that you start to feel like it's a bit of a pyramid scheme. See, Ben and InExpress franchise offers a low cost of entry, as well as the ability to earn a passive income. That means more time to spend on the finer things in life. Passive income sounds pretty good. Honestly, a lot of these things kind of give me that vibe. That's uh, an express, who cares? About that. An express, who cares about that? Custodia. It's basically a uh, franchise for elderly custodians. <laughs> that sounds weird. <laughs> They're not elderly. They specialize in helping elderly people with custodial stuff. They're currently expanding. They said that they were interested in coming into Quebec in like two years, but at the moment it looks like they're actually trying to target the states. And you see this quite a lot of the time when I asked these guys who were currently succeeding in Ontario, they have these issues with needing a local partner who speaks fluent French that they can trust to expand here. And for a lot of them, it's actually easier to open branches in the states where there is a much bigger market with less kind of quirks to it. Liberty Tax uh, is actually the Canadian subsidiary of a American chain. You know, they did that old put a maple leaf, now it's Canadian trick. They're in every province uh, apart from Quebec. Apparently we have a law that requires uh, you to have a head office in Quebec if you're doing financial activities. So for them to move into Quebec again, because they actually used to be here, would require them to have a bunch of money and a solid local partner to build a franchise that's immediately quite big. My favorite uh, thing that I found at the, <laughs> at the Franchise Expo was Shen Yuan. So Shen Yuan is a um, dance troupe that funds the uh, Falun Gong uh, cult. Started in 1992 by Li Hongze, who claims to be a supernatural being from another dimension sent to Earth to save humanity through a combination of breathing exercises and books on tape. They were promoting their show, and it is now apparently here. This is on the anniversary of the uh, massacre at the Polytechnic where 14 women were killed by a guy who didn't understand that he wasn't good enough to be an engineer. This is the big media event of the week and it happens to be here in Montreal. Yet Shenyuan somehow managed to pay them enough to buy out their entire front page. People have no idea what they're missing until they come here and see the show. And that's from Joe Hurd, who's a former White House photographer. He saw Shenyuan six times. And I think the deal with Shenyuan is that their members will do the dancing around for free so they basically get free labor to put together this show and incredibly enthusiastic, very wide-eyed uh, salespeople who will show up at things like a franchise expo and push out their brand. No, don't eat this stuff, they're monsters! I should say that I equally dislike the Falun Gong and the Chinese Communist Party. They're which uh, puts me in the unique position of being targeted from both sides on this issue, but you know, <laughs> I'm pretty used to that. Another organization that was there is called uh, Scholars, a professional academy to help kids learn stuff after school. Weirdly enough, also a common business in China. <laughs> These guys have an interesting reason to not be in Quebec. Quebec's curriculum is different enough that these guys actually have an outlet in Hong Kong before they have an outlet in our province. So currently they're rewriting their curriculum so that they can open an outlet here. Again, they gave me the two year number. So look for them soon if you want to kind of ruin your children's childhood. 
I asked for fresh slice guys whether they're coming to Montreal anytime soon and they gave me a response which many of them gave me which is the two year mark. Fresh Slice are originally from BC. A lot of these franchises first try to conquer Ontario and if they succeed there, they'll move into Quebec. Quebec is like the uh, more difficult market for most businesses. Halibut House, I asked these guys if they're coming to Montreal. They said they have absolutely no plans at all. These guys had no idea what I was saying because of my accent, which I'm sure that some of you can relate to. So we had a very, very confusing conversation. They're definitely doing quite well in Toronto, but I actually couldn't get a response out of them about whether they're coming to Montreal or not. It was literally that difficult to communicate. This is where, for me, things got really interesting. I was expecting to go along to the expo and find a hundred different restaurants trying to do franchises, but I realized that it doesn't work anything like I had supposed. So there's a few big conglomerates like restaurant brands and Yum brands and Dunkin' brands, they're all called brands, but they usually only own one or two things and they weren't actually at the trade show. What was at the trade show are two Canadian conglomerates that are responsible for a massive number of smaller outfits. The first one is called Recipe Unlimited. The guys at the expo doing this were kind of like your nicotine gum chewing, high octane sorts of guys. Nice guy, I don't give a shit. Good father. Fuck you, go home and play with your kids. You wanna work here? Close! I liked them immediately. The Recipe Unlimited specializes in what I'm gonna call North American fare. Picture like a outlet mall just off the highway in Calgary. There's a food place and it's got that kind of like glassed off uh, terrace and you kind of look at it and you look at the highway and you're like, who eats here? That's this stuff. I didn't get all of the bro's brochures, but we have a lot of brands here. So the first thing that they have, and I think it tells you a little bit about how these things work, is Saint Herbert, which obviously did start off as a um, Quebec-based business. <laughs> Maybe the most famous food outlet in Quebec. What happens with a lot of businesses is they grow to the size that they have a couple of outlets and then one of these big franchise conglomerates bought them and rolled them into their machinery. And then they get their own standardized brochure and when you go along, you show up with your half million dollars, you can choose which one you want. You know, you can be like, mm, I think I'll do uh, mm, a uh, Saint Herbert on this location. They'll sign off on you being allowed to or not and then they give you the kit to make sure everything looks in line with the rest of the brand. In addition to Saint Herbert, they have Harvey's, Eastside Mario's, Kelsey's Original, Milestone's, Original Joe's, New York Fries, Prime Pubs, State and Main, Elephant and Castle, The Burgers Priest, Tavern 1909, Montana's, Swiss Chalet, The Keg, beer market, kind of quite a lot of those. I'm gonna call them plastro pubs, you know? They're like really tall ceiling painted black, staff wearing tight black shirts, running an oven, chicken wings, 150 beers on tap, you know what I mean? There's an even larger conglomerate called MTY Group. They kind of explain a phenomenon which a friend of mine has remarked about. He said, you know, something that makes Montreal feel a little bit different is that whenever I come here, you have your own weird Montreal versions of things. And the reason for that is because the large conglomerate that competes with Recipe is based here. Where Recipe went for burgers and fries, these guys go for the long tail of every sort of ethnic cuisine that you could get in Canada. It's actually owned by a Hong Kong immigrant to Montreal, and I think that these guys may have seen what was coming down the pipeline as far as there's lots of really delicious food in the world, and eventually these white people who are eating at Harvey's are going to cotton on to the fact that they might prefer Indian food from time to time. Similar to Recipe, these guys acquire brands over time. Once something succeeds and it's proven that there's a demand for it, they'll kind of come in and be like, hey, uh, do you want to retire a person who started three uh, restaurants? Well, we can help you do that. We'll buy you out and formalize how you do your stuff. One of those would be Van Hut. That's a very old uh, Quebec brand uh, that they acquired uh, pretty recently. MTY Group is so large, often they own businesses that produce in the same category, but in different levels of market, so high end and low end. So Van Hut. And then their, I think, lower end option is uh, Cafe Depot. I don't know why, but I've never ever gone into these places. Maybe I just don't go out to drink coffee enough. Same thing with 
Le Dippery that I've noticed springing up everywhere and Le Creamery. Le Creamery is kind of their older lower end brand. Le Dippery is the fancy new one. Thai Express I believe is their big hit. I think this is kind of the engine that has driven a lot of their growth. I don't think there's a mall in Canada that doesn't have a Thai Express. I believe they've actually managed to expand internationally with this guy. It happened. They also kind of create their own brands. This looks to me like potentially a didn't exist before Indian restaurant that they're just creating. And I think it's kind of funny with them. They kind of do this thing. Uh, we need to make a restaurant uh, that does Korean food. Korean food, uh, kimchi, and then they just call it a kimchi and a sushi shop, you know. I think Sushi Shopper was actually originally a business and was one of the acquisitions, but a lot of their brands have names that are just really obvious. You know exactly what that is. If these guys had like a British pub brand, they'd call it like Fish and Chip Co. They have all the costs for establishing a franchise and um, it appears that it's a little bit more expensive to start a Japanese restaurant than a Korean one for, for some reason. I don't know, why? Koryo Korean barbecue actually originally came from Alberta. It's showing that uh, Albertans will do any sort of barbecue, they don't give a shit. Pretty good example of the sorts of names I'm talking about. Manchu Wok. I'm gonna guess that Manchu Wok will not be called Manchu Wok in 20 years time. For now, it's a lower end of the market, westernized Chinese food. You can tell that it's westernized Chinese food because there's not a whole bunch in downtown. Cultures and Jugo Juice, health food brands that they own. They also run a bunch of burger joints and that sort of thing. So like Big Smoke Burger, The Works, which I guess competes against like the Burgers Priest um, and Baton Rouge, which would be your competitor for like uh, Montana's and that sort of thing. They also own another Quebec staple, which is Valentine. And they have uh, Ben and Florentine, which is like a breakfast place, like that egg place. There's a bunch of other businesses that they own. It's interesting how much stuff these guys have managed to accumulate over the years. Their portfolio is huge. And if you have lived in Canada for any period of time, you're guaranteed to have gone to one of their shops. In fact, I'd say most people frequent one of them. So after going to the expo, there's two things that I think are interesting to point out. One is if you want to start a franchise, as long as you know what you're getting into, it is a pretty good way to grab the keys and get up and running with a business without all of the work of having to think about your branding and where your market segment is. But I'd be really cautious. I noticed when I was looking around that tons and tons of them are actually closed or used to be in Quebec and they're not here anymore. And I think the reason for that is because these big franchise operators are happy to take your money and maybe from time to time they're not happy to give you a lot of help. And perhaps for some people they thought that when they handed over $400,000 that would be all they needed to do. But running a business even if it's a franchise is still a lot of work. You'll notice also when visiting the websites for these businesses that almost every single one has a big old franchise button. So they're really pushing and selling joining their franchise operation. The key thing for most of the operators when I asked was they're looking for a competent person to run the business in Quebec. So if they don't currently have an outlet here, if you know what you're doing and you have enough money to get the franchise going, they're very, very interested in talking to you. Just, you know, be careful. The second thing anyone watching this would be interested in is when's my thing coming? Going along to this expo made me really appreciate the value of buying stuff that isn't from a franchise. I mean, almost every single thing that you look at is rated like 3.5 stars on Google Maps. This stuff is almost universally mediocre. Once a business that was formerly unique and interesting gets rolled into this large organization, it just kind of becomes like, how can a high school student cook food to this level? Although it becomes standardized and you know what you're gonna get, what you're gonna get is just average. So it's a little bit sad, <laughs> to be honest. I've got uh, friends who ran a restaurant that they just put their entire heart and soul into, and it was a little sad to see how excited people were about a new Tim Hortons opening up. So if you're waiting for something that you really, really liked when you're traveling or usually from your childhood to show up, you might be a little bit disappointed when it gets here. And I guarantee you that there is a locally owned place with a person who really, really cares. They would appreciate your business so much more. So let me know, is there a franchise or a chain that you think uh, really has something better than anything else uh, that we're missing out on? I'd be interested to know, maybe I'm missing something. You can take your place up here in the sky.